In this presentation, we're going to look at maximization using the branch and bound uh, technique. So this is a quick overview of the tree approach uh, to branch and bound. Branch and bound. Uh, this is uh, related to integer programming. So what we're going to do here is we're going to maximize this. This is our objective function here. Okay and it's subject to the following constraints. This is the general uh, int integer programming problem. Okay, so we're going to maximize that 3x1 plus 5x2 subject to 2x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 25 x1 is less than or equal to 8 uh, 2x2 less than or equal to 10 x1 and x2 are integers and x1 and x2 are non are non-negative. Now the first thing we'll do in this problem is what we do is called an LP relaxation where we just sort of um, uh, relax the, f the requirement for an integer uh, solution. So this then it turns into a sort of general uh, linear programming problem. Okay, So what we'll do is solve this pro problem uh, at node 0. Okay, So this is the, the first problem, the node 0 problem. Okay, now let's say for argument's sake our solution, our optimal solution here is x1 is equal to 8 and x2 is equal to 2.25. Okay, and our the evaluation for the objective function at this point is z equals 3 times 8 plus. 5 times 2.25 that works out to be 35.25 that's the uh, evaluation of the objective function at node 0. The idea of branch and bound is that we impose two new constraints uh, there's one constraint that we apply here and we would solve this problem. Here the constraint is x2 less than or equal to 2 and here we have the, the opposite pro, uh, constraint x2 is greater than or equal to 3. They are based on the floor function and seeding function of this value here. Okay. Now what would happen here if I was these and again you would uh, apart from the fact that you have these additional constraints these are two sort of conventional linear programming problems. So let's say for argument's sake that the solution here was x1 is equal to 8 and x2 is equal to 2 okay that's an in, uh, integral solution okay that means actually in a branch and brown branch and bound problem we don't go down any further but what we might do is check what the optimized uh, the uh, the uh, value of the objective function is at that solution and let's say in this case it would be 34 uh, go, that's we'll call this one node one a. We'll call this one node one b. Okay, this node here. Okay, so solving the pro same problem at node b or the, the similar problem this time x two is greater than or equal to three. Let's just suppose we get a solution here. X one is equal to six point five, and x two is equal to three. Okay. So that's a non-integral solution, okay? So what we might do here is branch and bound on x1 uh, equal to 6.5. But something we should check first, is it worth doing, okay? Essentially, the objective function has to be higher than at node 1a, because we already have a solution, a possible solution at candidate for our, um, inter our, our overall answer at node 1a. But what you have to do here is like just check out could we get a better solution elsewhere. So in this case what we're going to do is if we evaluate that we get 34.5. Okay. So that sort of suggests according to our rule essentially that it's worth continuing on with. Okay. Let's just say for a hypothetical in a hypothetical problem not really specifically here if we got 33.5 we could get an integral solution if we branched and bound but it won't be as good as node 1a because it just won't. It, 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 it'll be no higher than 33.5 so in that case there'll be no point going any further even if we could. So it's just a sort of one of these cutoff points that the it's bound by dominance as in no matter what we do from uh, branch and bound it has to be better than node 1a. But anyway so 35.5 okay. 
Uh, we do the same thing again. So we're going to branch and bound from node 1B. Okay. We're not going to branch and bound from node 1A because we actually have an optimal, a non-integral, sorry, an integral optimal solution there that we don't really need to go any further. We're looking for an integral solution. Uh, in this side, we'll call this node 2C and node 2D. Okay. At node 2D, we are going to apply the additional constraint that we're branching and bounding on x1. Oops. We're branching and bounding on x1. Uh, so on this side, what we're going to check is we're going to uh, impose the additional constraint that x1 has to be greater than or equal to 7 and try and solve it here. What will happen here is that it's actually infeasible. Okay you actually will get an infeasible solution okay so we're not going to go any further that's infeasible okay um, here what we would have is x1 less than or equal to 6 and let's say for argument's sake the answer here is 6 and x1 is equal to 6 and x2 is equal to 3.25 okay 3.25 okay so what we have to do to check here is uh, evaluate the up to the um, objective function now in this case what we would get is z equals 34.25 okay that means we could still potentially get a better answer than node 1a if we were to branch and bound Okay, so what we do is do this one more time. Okay, we do this one more time. And um, that's supposed to be in green. Let's do that in green. So we branch x2, that's not green, x2 is less than or equal to uh, x2 less than or equal to 3 and x2 greater than or equal to 4 in this case what we we would get uh, two possible answers here we would get uh, 6 and 3 x1 is equal to 6 x2 is equal to 3 and here we would get x1 is equal to 4.5 and x2 is equal to 4 but when we have evaluate the objective functions so essentially we're going to stop here at node 3e anyway and this is node 3f okay uh, what we're going to do is ev uh, evaluate the objective functions z here is going to be equal to 33 okay so we got one candidate solution down here but it is inferior to this one here okay so we're not going to go any further with it because it's the the solution is dominated by the solution at node 1a what about 3f what we're going to do is evaluate the objective function there and we would get find it to be 33.5 okay now here what we could do is we could branch and bound a bit further but our answer is not going to be better than 33.5 so also we're not going to go any further uh, because essentially we're just going to stop there our answer will not be better than 33.5 so overall our answer is here node 1a uh, x1 is equal to 8 x2 is equal to 2 where the objective function there is uh, evaluated at z equals 34 okay so that is just a sort of rough idea a rough idea of the workflow okay now I sort of skipped over the how to evaluate all, or get all of these answers essentially what I'm going to do is actually a multiple choice thing so you just have to work it out yourselves or to speed it up but essentially this is this is the overall workflow f before you start and then you would get into the uh, uh, you know you'd actually have to think your way through it and navigate your way through it just as a quick remark what I'm going to just do is tell you what the, what's this about node 1a node 1b essentially what we have is levels so at the top we have node 0 okay then we have at level 1 
we have or this level one we have node one a or node one b over here and node one a over here then beyond that we would have two a two b two c and 2D. Now we didn't actually visit node 2A and 2B in the last time but it's just a uh, uh, so you know what node is what. Then beyond that 3A 3B 3C 3D 3E 3F 3G and 3H so that's the idea of this nomenclature for nodes. So you can tell what level it is and where it is on going from right to left. Okay, so that's a quick run through of the branch and bound problem for integer programming.